Hello ladies and gentlemen, coming to you with the first installment on a new approach to trying to teach plant identification. Uh, the place where I'm actually talking to you today is from my back patio and you can tell we're doing this in, in mid-April because that oak tree damaged by a tornado April 30th of last year still hasn't leafed out yet. But we still have had plenty of full rainfall and very active growth of a few different species. And I'm going to try to show you that even from your patio, if you're someplace in Missouri, you're likely to find several of the species that we rely on as forage grasses and forage legumes. Uh, two of the most common and, prom common and prominent species are, of course, white clover and tall fescue. But I'm going to show you more than just those two uh, in just a few minutes time. So. Let's start off with the white clover, and uh, I'm going to switch the camera so you can actually have a look of, of our, at our patio here. I'm coming up to the edge of the concrete of our patio, and you can start to see some of these broadleaf legumes that are present in this mixture. Because I have not done a good job of providing fertilization to give the advantage to grasses. So even though the grasses look really green and, and uh, vigorous in their growth, uh, the lack of nitrogen fertilization has allowed um, white clover to become uh, quite prominent in this area. So let's take a look at the white clover and its habit. Uh, this is a very likely a ladino clover. Ladino is a type of white clover that's fairly large in its leaf size. You'll, also, you'll see from the publication that was among the assigned readings that there's more than just one type of white clover. There are the Dutch and the wild types as well. So this ladino clover typically produces spherical white flowers and is known to have this white sort of chevron or v-shaped watermark on its leaflets and as i focus in here you can see that there are also very tiny serrations that are present on the edges of the leaves so uh, a couple of other features that i want to show you about white clover if you were to begin to extract it from the edge of the of the uh, from the grass and that's I pulled up a couple of samples that are now here on the edge of the sidewalk I want you to uh, continue to look closely at the leaflets these leaflets which are beginning to to wilt because of um, I pulled them just a couple of minutes ago um, as you look really closely at these leaves you can see that there are very fine serrations if we were looking at outside clover the teeth or the serrations would be much more prominent now this palmately uh, trifoliate leaf, meaning all those petiolules are about the same length. You'll remember this conversation from the clover homework uh, discussion. Um, are all uh, means that it's in sort of a palmate arrangement. The alternative is the pinnate arrangement in which the middle one is a little bit longer. Now, uh, white clover spreads by stolons, meaning a horizontal stem, right along the ground. So I've broken off a piece of that and you can, I want, to, I want you to see that the stem lacks hairs, right? So we call that glabrous or lacking of hairs. You might also note that the stipules are actually just a membrane and sort of inconspicuous, meaning they're difficult to find or see. So the lack of really prominent stipules is one of the characteristics that will help to identify it. The lack of hairs, the presence of stolons, so it's a creeping um, a creeping sort of uh, legume as opposed to a bushy or upright species. We'll look more at some clover species as we wander into other parts of my farm a little bit later on. In other videos. For now I want to shift our focus to the grasses that you see. Very much of this is tall fescue. Now some of it is the old Kentucky 31 tall fescue, um, which you can see here. It's got a wider leaf blade, and notice that I haven't sharpened my uh, uh, mower blades because it's leaving a very, a very obvious um, cut. Um, tall fescue is difficult to break, really tough um, veins in those leaves, and they uh, sort of... Uh, uh, more obvious glossy back, but a more dull upper surface. So this, char these characteristics of tall fescue help us to um, identify it uh, and begin to make us focus um, or re refine our focus into thinking that this is probably tall fescue that we're looking at. But I also want you to realize that many of the other surrounding grasses are, a, are also tall fescue, but they're a turf type of tall fescue. So they're a little bit, they've been selected for 
uh, turf growth and to have the appearance that would be more desirable, which means a finer, narrower leaf than you might expect with the regular Kentucky 31 tall fescue. Let me hold these two leaves side by side so you can see what I'm talking about. One is about half or maybe five-eighths the width of the other. So the turf type tall fescue, darker green, but the other species characteristics are still going to remain the same. Let me show you what I mean by species characteristics. One of those species characteristics is going to be that the leaves are rolled in the sheath. If you look closely, that leaf as it's emerging from that sheath is, um, is rolled up as if you were to roll a piece of notebook paper. Other species like orchard grass could be folded or are folded in the sheath. The other thing I want you to do is focus in on the auricles. Clasping auricles will be present on annual ryegrass, but not on perennial ryegrass or tall fescue. Kentucky 31 tall fescue is also going to lack prominent auricles. Let me pull that sample and see if I can get it into focus there. So that individual lacking auricles. Now remember, auricles are the sort of claw-like structures that hug that tiller or stem. So the fact that it lacks auricles if we look again very closely, perhaps we can see a, a membranous ligule. Might be more difficult to, to see in this case in the collar region. Lacks prominent auricles. Promi it does have prominent veins on the leaf, and it's rolled in the sheath. When I see all of those characteristics come together, can be 95% confident that what I'm looking at is tall fescue. Now by comparison, let's look at some of the other grasses that are present. I'll move over here to this individual. This is a mixture of grasses and this one is not tall fescue. I can tell that immediately because the tip of that grass is sort of boat shaped, like at the front of a canoe. Now those of you who are familiar with grasses are already are going to immediately realize that what we're talking about is a bluegrass species. In this case, it's Kentucky bluegrass. Kentucky bluegrass grows very well here in the South Missouri through April, and then its growth greatly declines. There are several different stems or leaves of, of Kentucky bluegrass growing very vigorously right now in this sward or mixture of grasses. And the reason is that our cooler temperatures at this time of year really enable it to grow well. Now, if you live in St. Louis or areas further north, Kansas City and further north, then you'll probably have more or as much Kentucky bluegrass as you do tall fescue. Further in the south, you're going to see more tall fescue begin to dominate or as we get further into the summer months. I mentioned we would also look at other species, and I want you to recognize that as we look around, some of these leaves appear to be more glossy than others. Now this glossy or shiny sorts of characteristics should be tipping us off that there might be more species here than just Kentucky bluegrass and um, tall fescue. Now I failed to mention that Kentucky bluegrass is also rolled in the sheath, but that boat-shaped tip, as long as it hasn't been recently mowed, should tip you off that we're looking at very likely Kentucky bluegrass. Now I'm going to step up and begin to walk across the, the grassy area here. And I want you to see that there's a clump of grass here that is extremely shiny and apparently a slightly different color. Now if it were a gray-blue color I would be beginning to think this might be orchard grass, but since it's more of a, a shiny green color, um, I'm going to take a closer look at this plant and uh, see if we can't find some really obvious characteristics that help us to identify it. So, shiny characteristic, the leaf breakage or cutting from the mowing looks like tall fescue, but this really shiny sheen or glossy characteristic of this leaf and the lack of hairs is beginning to cause me to think that what we're looking at is, is probably um, another species. So, let me see if I can't get a zoom in here on the uh, on this grass and the evidence that I'm seeing is that this is again tall fescue whoop I'm mistaken look closely and you can see the auricles are 
there are oracles that are present and they are clasping. They're reaching around. So what we're looking at here is very likely annual ryegrass. Annual ryegrass, shiny on both leaf surfaces with clasping oracles around that stem right in the collar region.